Today you are going to learn magic tricks that you can do for your family and friends. You can astound them with these simple illusions that you can do with things that you have around your house. So let's pull a rabbit out of our hats. The levitating straw. All you need is a straw, or you can also use a magic wand, a magic wand that you can make with a straw or a stick or anything like that. Once there were five magicians. They walked into the room, quietly walked into the room, and there in the middle of the room, one of them picked up a magic wand. It looked so plain, but they each took a hold of that wand. And then one by one, the magicians let go of that wand until the last magician let go and the wand floated in the middle of the room all by itself. The levitating wand. Are you ready to find out how to do this trick? It's so easy. Just to wait. Just wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ta -da! So when you wrap your hand around your wrist, you hold the straw or the wand in place with your pointer finger, your index finger. So let's do it again in slow motion. So get your straw or you can use a magic wand that you make either way. So for this time round, I'm going to use this magic wand. So you can do these magic tricks. You can make up a little story, or maybe you want to make up a different story for this trick. So the five magicians walk into the room. They take a hold of that magic wand. And one by one, they let it go. And then when you get to toward the end, toward the last two fingers, take your other hand and just wrap it around your wrist with your pointer finger holding the wand or the straw. So it looks like this to your friends. It looks like this. And then you let go and it is levitating all on its own. Just like that. A straw through the cheek. All you need is a straw. Now, if you want a little more drama, something a little more dramatic, you can use a skewer that has a point at the end. You can try that as well. But for right now, I'm going to use the straw. And you can make up another little story to go along with this trick. Once there were three kids, they were just hanging out and messing around and they wanted to show off a little. So the first one said, Hey, look at me! I can put a straw through my head! Ah, come on! That's not real magic! Oh, look at me! I can put a straw through my neck! Oh, you guys are crazy. You're crazy. Look at me. Because I can put a straw through my cheek. Okay.
So to do this trick, <coughs> it's just an optical illusion. Like all these tricks, they're all just illusions. So it looks like the straw is going through your cheek, but it's really not. So you just make a loose fist and I'll do it in slow motion and I'll show you it again and then I'll give you the secret. So I'm putting the straw through my cheek. Now I'll fish. <laughs> okay, so you make a loose fist, put your thumb in your mouth and just very gently push your cheek out to make it look like that straw is trying to go through your skin. So you just could do this. And push that straw in between your loose fist and your mouth so that it looks like it's going through your cheek. So try that. I'm going to try it with this skewer and you can see it looks just a little different. So have your straw and your hand, put your thumb in your mouth, make a loose fist, and put your straw between your mouth. So the straw is going in between your thumb and in between your finger. And put your thumb in your cheek to make it look like it's being pushed out. And then gently push it. And there is your illusion. The straw through the cheek trick. The disappearing coin. This, my friends, is a magic cup. Anything you put inside will disappear. I just happen to have, looks like a nickel, any kind of coin that you have, drop it in. Let's see if this magic cup really works. Let's put in our coin. Let's see if it works. Magic cup, magic cup, make things disappear. It disappeared. I wonder if this magic cup can make that coin reappear. I don't know. Magic cup, magic cup, make our coin come back. There it is. Now I'm going to show you how you can do this trick yourself. I'll show it to you and then we'll make it t together. So you put your coin in and then look what happens next. With my thumb, I cut a little flap and with my thumb, I'm going to push that flap down. And when I do, it holds that nickel inside the cup. I'm going to dump it in my hand to make it look like I dumped the coin in my hand. When I open it up, of course, nothing's there. To make it reappear, put it in and just let go of that flap and the coin will fall out. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so for this trick, you will need a paper cup. You can use plastic, but it's really hard to cut a plastic cup. A paper cup works so much better. A paper cup, it could be really any size. You'll need scissors. You'll need coin, doesn't matter, quarter, nickel, dime. Or you can use a coin from another country and make up a story about somebody from another country and you brought back this magic cup from that place. Or you can use a, a die, die, or you know anything else that's small that you want to disappear, you can get. And then to start the cut, it does help if you have a pen or something like that to start your cut. So let's 
do it together. So if you need to pause to get these things, pause the video and then come right back and we can make it together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little starting hole, a starting place for the scissors. Because if I don't, the scissors could slide and it could easily um, cut, cut you. So if you want to, if you uh, are a little younger, you might ask an older brother or sister or someone else in your family to help you cut this flap. So I'm going to cut kind of like uh, an upside down triangle. So I'm going to cut a little bit at an angle. Okay. So you have your hole in your cup and just cut a little bit of a flap. Um, go up about halfway up that cup and then cut across the middle. And then go back down to the bottom, but you don't want to cut where you started because you need a flap. So cut, you know, maybe an inch from where you started so that you have a flap like this. So you'll be able to push it with your thumb and hold down whatever it is that you put inside. Okay, let's try that together. Let's try this trick together. So you have your magic cup. You can make up a story about your magic cup. Anything that you put inside disappears. Then you can have your friend or you or a family member drop something in the cup. And then you're going to say your magic words and do whatever you want to. You can use a magic wand. You can move your cup around and while you're doing that, you're pushing that flap down. So always keep that flap toward you so they cannot see that. So you have your flap down. You pretend like you're dumping something into your hand. So try that. So pretend that you're dumping something into your hand. And then, of course, when you open it up, nothing is there. If you want it to reappear, you can use your magic wand or you can use your hand or you can say magic words or cast a spell or talk about the magic of your cup. And then you just let, um, let the flap go with your finger. Just pull your thumb up and then dump your coin or whatever you have inside. Dump it into your hand. So you can dump it into your hand and hide it and reveal it. Or you can dump it straight onto the table or straight onto your friend's hand. Any way you do it is going to work out just fine. Have fun! This trick is the levitating cup. So you can make up an, a little story if you want to go along with this trick. Or you can make up a patter to make it a little bit more interesting for your friends and family. So for this trick, I'm going to call it the light as a feather cup. Believe it or not, this is a very special drink. It is as light as a feather. Let's pour it into this cup. It is so light and so airy that you cannot even see it. Oh, keep going. Ah, there we go. The cup is full of our light as a feather liquid. Now let's see what happens next. Oh, let's see. Hmm. Let's see if it is as light or lighter than a feather. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, it is. It is as light as a feather. Ooh, ah. This is another really easy trick. It's very similar to the levitating straw. 
because this is how it holds up. You put your thumb in a hole and there you have it. So you can use the same cup that you just used for the disappearing coin. You can use the exact same cup. So if you want to make another one, again, all you need is a cup, a pen to get the hole started to cut out the back, a pair of scissors, and let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to take the pen I'm going to make a hole in the side. I'm going to cut at a little bit of an angle going out, out to the middle of the cup, cut across and back down. You don't need quite as big of a hole, so you can make it a little bit smaller if you want to. And there you have your levitating cup. So let's do it together. So we can tell the same story if we want about our cup, our magic cup. You can maybe, this is just a little bit of a different variation of that story. You can say, I have a cup and anything you put in it will just float away. So let's put some magic air into our cup and wave our magic wand. Ah. Magic cup, magic cup, float through the air. Silence, please. Ah. Okay, I have to concentrate. There's your thumb right in the back. Good work. Warning, this illusion is slightly creepy and you can make up a story to go along with it. For instance, you can make up a story something like this. You know, the other, the other night, the sun went down and it was really dark. So I took up my flashlight and I was walking back home. And as I walked along, I saw something very unusual. There on the ground was a shoe. I took a few more steps and, and there was another shoe. Hmm. I walked a little further when my flashlight caught a sock. And one more step, there was another sock. What is going on here? Then I walked a little further and there was a glove. Hmm. Hmm. I walked a little bit further and there was another glove on the ground, on the sidewalk. And then the flashlight caught something on the ground, something else. But it wasn't a piece of clothing or a shoe. It was, it was an envelope. I reached down and it was sealed. I picked it up and I put it in my pocket. I waited till I was home under the lights and then I called my brother. I called my brother 
and my sister and my mom, my dad, my grandma to open up that envelope because I didn't want to open it up all by myself. So here, open it up and let's see what's inside. <laughs> now you can see that with this illusion you could make up all kinds of stories about how you found the envelope or what's inside or how you found the thumb. This is how it works. All you'll need is an envelope and a pair of scissors. In the envelope is a hole. I can stick my thumb in that hole and hold on to the envelope and turn it away so that you can't see that my thumb is there. And then when you have somebody open it up, then you can see the thumb inside, the thumb inside the envelope. I suppose you can do it with with your finger as well. And you open it up and there's a finger inside. Okay, so take your envelope and I like to cut the hole on the opposite side of the flap so that they can't see my thumb when they're opening up the flap. So all you have to do is take your scissors you may need an adult to get started, to have the hole get started. And you just cut the hole just on one side. You don't want it to go the whole way through. So, and you don't, it doesn't need to be a large hole. It just needs to be big enough for your thumb or your finger to fit through. Like that. So when you're holding the envelope, you put your thumb inside, and there it is. Kind of creepy. I know. I know. I warned you. It's kind of creepy. But make up a story. Make up your own story to go along with this illusion. It's the jumping rubber band trick. I'm going to make this rubber band jump from these two fingers to these two fingers. Here we go. Abracadabra, zimity zam. Jump from fingers to fingers if you can. And jump back, and jump back, and jump back, and jump back. This is how it works. It jumps from these fingers, whoo, right off. So we're going to make it even harder. Let's trap the rubber band on these fingers. So I'm going to put a rubber band, trap it so it can't come off. Let's try it again. See if it works this time. Whoa, it does. Now I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. This is a hair tie, but you can use a rubber band. Put it on two fingers, your pointer finger and your middle finger. And you're going to bend your fingers. This is what your audience sees, and this is what I see. So when you bend your fingers down, what you do is you pull all around all four of your fingers. You put that rubber band around your, where your nails are, and then when you open it, it jumps. And you can just make it go back and forth that way. Then you can add on to it by, by giving the illusion, by telling them that it jumps like this off of your fingers and then you put the trap on and it can't jump off 
but of course it does. So when you put it on your fingers, take your other rubber band. It helps if you have two different colors, but if you don't, that's mine too. So put the rubber band around your pointer finger like that, then make a twist, put it around your next finger, twist around your next finger, twist around the next finger, and there you go. It's trapped on there. And you can do your trick. So we'll do it one more time, super slow. So put it on your fingers, you bend your fingers, put it around all four, open it up, and there you go. I have a rubber band with me today. Oh, oh, it broke. Oh, let me see if I can put it back together. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, it did, it worked. This is how you do this trick. Take a rubber band and you're going to double it over like that. Then you go to use your pinkies to make it come around and you're just going to hold on to it with your thumb and your finger. Put those two ends together. And then make it look like you're stretching it, you're stretching it, you're stretching it. It breaks. So you put it back together by just touching those two ends. And then you let go. And there is your complete rubber band. So it's very simple. I'll do it again. Get your rubber band. You can do it with me. Get your rubber band and you go to make it double so it looks like it's one strand. And you this is this is the tricky part. It takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of flexibility. You take both ends and you touch them together and you hold them between your thumb and your pointer finger. And then you can make your rubber band look like it's stretching. And then it breaks. And you can put it together. And then just let go. And there it is back together again. Pretty simple. And it has a great illusion. Rubber pencil. All you need for this one is a pencil, and it's an illusion. So a pencil, of course, you can write with, but you can make it into rubber like this. A rubbery pencil. This is an interesting illusion, because all you have to do is take a hold of the pencil and just move it back very, very fast, up and down, to make it look like it's rubbery. There was a prince and a princess. Oh, how they longed to be together, to walk hand in hand down the lanes on a sunny day. But the road between them was long. There were hills and there were turns. The princess lived over here and the prince lived here and as the days passed there was a huge party and finally finally at that party between where the princess lived and where the prince lived they finally got to hold hands To do this trick, you need a strip of paper. It doesn't really matter how long it is. Um, the length of a piece of typing paper, printing paper, is great. And then you need two paper clips. So get your two paper clips, 
your strip of paper and we're going to put them together. You can make any kind of a story you want. Um, I just decided to make it so that they hold hands because they clip together. So the way you do it is you make an S shape. So take your strip of paper and make an S shape. So it's one end and a fold and another fold and an end. Take one paper clip and put it between the fold and the end. You're just going to clip two sides of the paper. Just one side of the fold and the end. So this side is, is loose. And then you're going to take the other paper clip and you're going to paper clip the other end to one side of the loop so it looks like this. Now you have to take a hold of the ends and you need to pull pretty fast for them to attach together. So take one end, take the other end, pull, and there's your attached paper clips. So I'll do it one more time. You can do it with me. Let's do it one more time together. So take a strip of paper and you're going to make an S shape like that. Take one paper clip and put it between the end and one side of the fold, the other paper clip, the other end, and the other side of the fold. So you have something that looks like this. Then you take both ends and pull your attached paper clips. For this trick, all you need is a shoestring or a piece of string or a piece of rope. You can even use a handkerchief if you want to. And tell your friends that you can tie a knot in this piece of string holding one, holding each end, one hand holding each end, and without letting go, you can tie a knot. So give it to them first and let them try. So they can hold their hands, they can hold each end with their fingers, and they can do their best to tie a knot without letting go. And now it's your turn. Lay the piece of string or the shoelace or the handkerchief or anything that you have, lay it on a table and you're going to cross your arms first. Take one end, take the other, without letting go, pull it through, there's your knot. Okay, let's do it again. Do it with me. We'll do it in slow motion. So take your string, lay it down on a table, and you're going to cross your arms before you take a hold of the ends. So just cross your arms, one arm, hand over the top. One hand is going to take one end of the string, and the other hand is going to take the other end of the string, and then you just pull it through without letting go. You tie your knot. To do this trick, you're going to need to have a friend and three crayons. I recommend a red one, a blue one, and a yellow one. They have to be very different colors, and you're going to find out in one minute. So I'm going to name these crayons. Here is the Queen of Hearts, the red one, and the blue one is Bluebeard, and the yellow one is the Golden Goose. So you're going to put them in your hands, and then you're going to put them behind your back and have a friend choose one of those crayons. So they're going to choose one crayon, and they're going to put it back in your hand. So you have 
two crayons in one hand and the hand that they and the crayon they chose in your other hand and without looking you're going to guess which one they chose hmm the queen of hearts yes it is this is how this trick works so first of all when you have your crayons you need to take some of the paper off the crayons so that the wax is exposed. Put them behind your back. So pretend like this is behind my back. I have them in my hands, in one hand. Somebody, my friend or somebody in my family, picks a crayon and they put it in my other hand. So I have the crayon they chose in this hand. So it's still behind my back. This is what I do. This is so tricky. I love it. Take your fingernail or your thumbnail and just scratch a little piece of that wax in your nail. And then you're going to bring your hand up around and then you're just going to look at the color in your, in your thumbnail and pretend like you're thinking like, oh, let me think. Hmm. And as you're thinking, just, just kind of glance down at your thumb and you'll see one of the colors. And then you can tell them which crayon it is. And the reason you don't want to have like an orange one and a red one or purple and blue is it's kind of hard to tell the difference of those colors just with a little piece in your thumbnail. So if you have three totally different colors, then very quickly you can look down as you're trying as you're thinking and concentrating and you can look down and you can see what color crayon they chose you could have more than three if you want but it is so simple and it will amaze them a penny through a bottle so all you need for this is a plastic or glass bottle and you need two pennies and that's all. So let's make a little story to go along with this trick. Look, I have a penny. I want to put it in my little jar that's my piggy bank. But let's see. I'm going to use some magic. Instead of putting this penny through the top like you normally would, I'm going to put this penny straight through this glass. Here we go. On the count of three, one, two, three. I did it. And now you can too. All you need is that second penny. Put it in the cap of the jar. So the penny is already in the jar. And then lay it on the table so that you can't see the penny. So put the cap toward the audience so they can't see the penny. Put the penny in your hand like this. And then Slap that penny onto the bottle and just turn it over so the penny that's in the cap falls down. So again, so get out your, we can do this together, get your jar, your um, bottle, whether it's plastic or glass, does not matter, does not matter. Put your penny in the lid or you can put it in the jar. You can put it in the jar and then just turn it over so that the penny is in the cap. Lay it down on your table. Take your other penny, put it in your hand. And now a little tip, when you slap it on, you don't want to make it like this so that people can see the penny through the glass. You want to make sure that you hide that penny that's in your palm of your hand from your audience. So you have your penny in your cap. 
you have your other penny in the hand. Slap it. And there is your penny through the glass. Pretty easy, right? Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. So long.